Hello everyone, welcome to English with Shalini and in this video we are going to discuss age of Chaucer and its timeline is from 1340 AD to 1400 AD and this age comes under Middle English period and during this age uh, many destructive event uh, happened. This was the age of turmoil. In this age great writer Geoffrey Chaucer was a uh, uh, writing and so upon him this age is named age of Chaucer and Chaucer lived during the this time it was a lot of turmoil and lots of transformation and changes were going on in England also and across the Europe and there was a renaissance was going on uh, started in Eng Italy during this age and uh, yet it has not come up to the uh, England now there was a hundred year war going on and it was going on between France and England and this lasted for 116 years and uh, this resulted in heavy taxation which caused peasant revolt. So this uh, uh, hundred year war caused peasant revolt and uh, apart from this there was a black death. Black death was a bubonic plague uh, which caused by the black rats and it uh, this black death befell in uh, England in 1348 to 1349 means first time it lasted for a year then it came again and again it revived in 1361 then 1362 and 1369 so it was a pandemic where lots and lots of people died due to this one third of England population died so you can compare this black death situation like a corona pandemic where a uh, lot of people died in our um, our century here so this uh, due to black death people started questioning power of god and church now due to this hundred year war uh, there was a heavy taxation on common people and people were rebelling and uh, and uh, that um, Richard II was king at that time and uh, he was a king and uh, here pe peasants were uh, demanding the uh, better life for themselves, they were demanding better wages for themselves. So cr Richard II crushed them and imposed tax upon them and he was not sympathetic towards uh, peasants. So uh, that caused a peasant revolt and uh, in this peasant revolt um, there were financial condition of people were very much down and it occurred during 1381 AD and this revolt was uh, led, led by Ward Tyler. So it is also called Tyler's Rebellion because leader was Tyler. So this is, uh, you must remember the name is also Tyler's Rebellion and there is a Peasant Revolt also or Peasant Rebellion also. So here um, the government declared heavy taxes on the poor peasant that resulted in this revolt and the people were suffering at this time <coughs> during the pe peasant revolt and now um, what happened and in this during this age there was a great writer Geoffrey Chaucer and we will discuss him in detail at this time so uh, Geoffrey Chaucer was a representative of 14th century he was uh, uh, he was born in 1340 during the reign of Edward III. So uh, he was born in that uh, time and uh, he was a uh, son of a vintner. He was son of a uh, wine merchant. So uh, Chaucer lived under the rule of three kings, uh, first Edward III, Richard II and Henry IV. Now Richard II was a grandson of Edward III and he succeeded him 13, in 1377, succeeded Edward III in 1377 and Chaucer got many royal favours and pensions during this age. In 1378, Chaucer was sent to Italy on his diplomatic missions. He was a scholar, he was a diplomat, you can see the picture here and he was a great person, great uh, poet. And in 1399, there was a revolution during which Lancastrian dynasty was founded and Henry IV became the king of England. Now, 
Chaucer could not enjoy the favor of Henry IV for much time and he died in 1400 just after the Henry IV came to throne of England so such was the case with um, Geoffrey Chaucer now now Chaucer was the first poet to be buried in the poets corner in Westminster Abbey before uh, before him nobody was buried there you can see the picture here this is a tomb of um, geoffrey chaucer this is tomb this is a, uh, something written here now chaucer's patron was john of gaunt and uh, who was his brother in law also because chaucer has married john uh, uh, married philippa philippa uh, and philippa was a uh, sister of john gaunt's wife so in this way chaucer was related to john of gaunt and uh, john of gaunt was a great noble at that time he was having court favor favors and because of that relation chaucer got uh, many good position in uh, in uh, royalty he was a diplomat he was a uh, in, in means he was a head of the every work which uh, king was uh, conducted at that time so it is also said that uh, chaucer uh, participated in this 100 year war so he participated in 100 year war and he was uh, imprisoned in that by uh, french people and uh, there edward iii uh, gave a ha heavy handsome heavy ransom for him and he released uh, chaucer now we will talk about the literary features of this age and uh, in this age english language became standardized and uh, there was a uh, in this anglo saxon age and anglo normal phase english went through many changes there was different uh, dialects especially four dialects were there and out of that east midland dialect was very popular and uh, shakespeare also chose this dialect for his uh, writing his uh, works and this uh, east midland dialect became the standard language after some time and at that time french and english combined to form the standard english language now this age was the age of chaucer was also the a uh, not the age of anonymity was uh, uh, not there because in the earlier ages there was people there were works which were anonymous means uh, people don't know who were the writers of that um, work like uh, beowulf beowulf was a great work but we don't know the name of the writer so this was not the age of uh, that that age in this age people were um, giving names to their works with pride now in this age age of chaucer prose also emerged in this age and uh, great prose work was uh, travels of sir john mandeville travels of john mandeville was a prose work which was very famous then in this age there was a translation of bible john wycliffe john wycliffe was a great reformer and precursor of reformer he translated uh, bible from latin to vernacular english so it was the first time translation of bible from latin to english and this was a very popular before that uh, bible was in latin language so people couldn't understand latin and when it uh, came in english they all read and they knew about the real uh, real god and jesus christ and all those things so now this age of chaucer is a foundation moment of english literature and geoffrey chaucer is the father of english literature and father of english poetry he is named such he was a great poet and um, uh, this uh, now we will uh, do some detailed study on this uh, geoffrey chaucer so now let's begin so he was born in th 1340 ad and uh, he has written many poems and he has gone through many stages means uh, if we want to understand chaucer in a better way we can divide his works in a three stages so first come uh, the french stage in which influence of french uh, literature was there upon Cha chaucer and poems were written under the influence of french 
Now, poem's model on the original works of French was uh, Romant of Rose, and which was based on the Romant de la Rose, in which was in uh, French. Then Chaucer translated in Romant of Rose. In modern English, we call it Romance of the Rose. Now, he has written book a book of Duchess. This book of Duchess is uh, again the dream allegory. This romance of Rose was also a dream allegory. This is also dream allegory, but it, this is an original uh, dream by Ch Chaucer. Here in the book of Duchess, he has written about his patron John of Gaunt. Now comes Italian stage. This stage is better than that uh, French stage. And here Chaucer has written some great, great works. And uh, his work is House of Fame. This is written in octosyllabic couplet. Now he has written the Parliament of Fowls, Enelida and the Arcite, Troilus and Cressid. Now this Troilus and Cressid has adopted from the Boccaccio's work. Boccaccio was a great Italian writer and uh, um, Chaucer has written this in Rhyme Royal. And why it is called Rhyme Royal? Because King James first used this, um, uh, this rhyme. So this is called Rhyme Royal. Now Troilus and Cressid is a great narrative work and this has also been written by, uh, taken as a plot by the William Shakespeare. Now, again, he had uh, written Legend of Good Women, which was in heroic couplet. Now comes English st stage, English phase, where Chaucer was uh, writing very, very much with originality. And greatest work was Canterbury Tales. This greatest, uh, this was the greatest individual accomplishment by Chaucer. And this work is very, very famous. In fact, uh, this uh, no, no work is important in Middle Ages better than Canterbury Tales. And this is Chaucer's magnum opus, his uh, masterpiece. And Chaucer took the general idea of the Canterbury Tales from Italian writer Boccaccio. So Boccaccio, the Italian writer, has written a work called a Decameron, and uh, which was a similar kind of uh, tale, which was means there was tales. So in this uh, Canterbury Tales also, there are tales, stories are there, but all the stories are basically in verse also only. And this here, what happens? 29 pilgrims plus Chaucer, uh, the narrator, meets the Tabard Inn, meet at the Tabard Inn at uh, Southwark, London. And they are going on a pilgrimage to the tomb of St. Thomas Becket at Canterbury. And uh, so they are going to the uh, pilgrimage. And pilgrims came from different backgrounds and have different personality. Now there is a host and the name of the host is Harry Belly. So Harry Belly, the host of the Tabard Inn, suggests the pilgrims should tell stories to make the journey interesting. Now each pilgrim should tell two stories. It was decided by uh, Harry Belly uh, and suggested by Harry Belly that uh, to pass the time um, in, the, uh, in the journey of pilgrimage, they have to tell two stories on the outward journey and two stories on the return journey. And the person who tell the best story gets the free meal at the Tabard Inn. So Canterbury Tales would have been the collection of 120 tales. Yes, there was a Chaucer's plan, but what happened? He died. Chaucer died and he couldn't finish this uh, stories and he could finish only 24 stories before his death. Now in this Canterbury Tales, uh, there are all tales are in verse. 22 uh, tales are in verse and only two prose tales are there. And this uh, prose tales are the Parson's Tales, uh, the tale tale by told by the Parson and there is a Chaucer's Tale, a Tale of Melibes which is in prose form. So, uh, Canterbury Tales is a collection of 24 stories. Now, the first tale uh, and first story was told by Knights, which is called the Knight's Tale. And the last tale or the last story is the Parson's Tale, which is also uh, in prose. So, now Chaucer uh, has brought three important classes in this uh, Canterbury Tales. And these classes, three classes, which 
the pilgrims belongs are first they belong to the nobility first class is nobility they are uh, nobles great rich persons and one is a knight here and one is a squire and uh, then the there is a second group which belong to the ecclesiastical group here the people are belonging to the church and they are clergy they are monk prior prioress summoner pardoner now the third group is commoner uh, in which there are common people and they are cook weaver carpenter clerk and all those so uh, apart from so chaucer was a great poet uh, during this age but there was some great other poets also apart from chaucer and we will discuss about them now so other poets were william langland and john gower these notable poets so first of all william langland so william langland has written a work called peer the plowman and this is a dream vision this is a dream uh, vision uh, poem and this uh, peer the plowman tells the poet's vision in the malvern hills so uh, poet is just uh, having a vision and dream vision and uh, um, william langland was a revolutionary poet and the motif of the poem uh, of this peer the plowman is was to expose the corruption among clergy and to talk about the struggle and virtues of common people his uh, now william langland was a great satirist and his satires were very harsh very vehement and uh, in the same time what happened chaucer satires were very mild and it, it he was a very humorous uh, person chaucer was and he used humor in his work but uh, william langland didn't use humor and his satires were very vehement and harsh and so his uh, this is a kind of a satirical work also now next poet is john gower and john gower played active part in politics during this age and he also was very popular in literary field also he was active in literary activities and uh, he also did frequent and severe criticism of the church and clergy during this time and uh, we know his three works and one is speculum meditantis which is in french then he has written vox clementis which is in latin then there is a third work which is confessio amantis which is in english and this is very important because it is in english so this was the age of chaucer and hope you like this video please subscribe my channel and thank you so much for listening